5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. And lift off. Allumage EAP, décollage. Décollage, lift off from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. 2022 marked the beginning of the James Webb era in astronomy. The $10 billion infrared space telescope was launched on Christmas Day in 2021. It took a month to reach its destination, the L2 Lagrange point a million miles away, and five more months to calibrate and prepare for science observations. Nevertheless, when the first Webb images were released, they beat all expectations. They included the deepest infrared view of the cosmos, a beautiful stellar nursery where hundreds of stars are taking birth. The spectrum of an exoplanet's atmosphere as never seen before, a dying star that has formed a spectacular ring of gas and dust around it, and a visual grouping of five galaxies in a new light. When data from the James Webb Space Telescope's early science program were released, hundreds of research papers were submitted for publication within weeks. Most papers were on stellar astrophysics, extragalactic astronomy, exoplanets, dark matter, and the solar system. It was if the Webb opened those windows to the cosmos that no other telescope in history could. But what exactly did Webb discover that showed our theories were wrong? How did the infrared observatory revolutionize astronomy within months? Finally, and most importantly, what does 2023 look like for the James Webb Space Telescope? When astronomers started working on building the James Webb Space Telescope, its primary science goal was to discover the most distant galaxies in the universe. To test the predictions made by the Big Bang Theory, it was important to look back in time to the era in which the stars and galaxies were taking birth. Although we have discussed it in the past episodes of the series, here's how it works. Since light travels at a finite speed, Everything we see in the universe is how it looked in the past. So, if the light travel distance to a galaxy is 12 billion light years, we are looking at how it appeared 12 billion years ago because its light took that much time to reach us. Now, because of the universe's expansion, the wavelength of the light emitted by the galaxy increases by the time it reaches us. In other words, it becomes redshifted. Astronomers denote redshift by dimensionless quantity, z. z equals zero is the present time, and as its value increases, so does the look-back time and the distance to the celestial object. Before Webb, astronomers had found just one galaxy in the z greater than 11 eras, or the first 400 million years of the universe. It was a galaxy named GNZ 11 at a redshift of 11.1 and was discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2015. Galaxies at redshift of more than 12 are beyond Hubble's reach because it primarily works in the optical and the UV region of the electromagnetic spectrum. However, Webb is an infrared observatory. Infrared waves have a longer wavelength and can easily pass through interstellar dust. This means Webb can peer at those regions of the cosmos that even Hubble could not. Astronomers expected that they would just get a refined version of the Hubble deep field, with only a few galaxies having a redshift of more than 10 in the early release science program. But what Webb showed them in its first pictures was completely unexpected. Dozens of faint, super-early galaxies immediately sprung into view. The James Webb Space Telescope turned out to be so powerful that it even spotted individual star clusters around a galaxy 9 billion light-years away. 
Every week following the release of the first pictures, there was a new record of the farthest galaxy being spotted by astronomers. It started with galaxies at a redshift of 11, 13.1, 14.3, and went as far as 16.4. The galaxy candidate that Webb discovered at a redshift of 16.4 existed in the first 250 million years of the Big Bang. It was like looking at the edge of time itself. Although breaking the record of observing the farthest galaxy one after another was quite exciting, astronomers started noting unusual things about those galaxies. The Big Bang Theory says that star formation began 150 million years after the universe began. This primary generation of stars, called Population 3 stars, formed proto-galaxies in the first 500 million years. Then, these proto-galaxies further formed the first proper galaxies of the universe. This process must have lasted about a billion years. So astronomers were expecting to see proto-galactic fragments on their way to forming bigger galaxies in the first few hundred million years of the universe. But, to their surprise, they spotted things that were already giant galaxies. These galaxies had a large stellar mass of the order of a billion solar masses. They also had an exceptionally high star formation rate and above par star formation efficiency. So, if star formation indeed began 150 million years after the Big Bang, how did these giant galaxies form so early? What fueled such a high star formation rate in the early universe? Another peculiar thing about these galaxies is that they have a high UV luminosity and a low dust content. In one of the research papers, astronomers nicknamed them Blue Monsters. We know that super-early galaxies are home to massive, short-lived stars. Hence, the supernova rate is much higher in these primordial galaxies. Supernovas are also known to be primary dust factories in the early universe. But the problem is that the dust content in those galaxies doesn't align with our calculations. So where is the missing cosmic dust? Astronomers propose two solutions in their paper, but they need further evidence to be confirmed. The first extragalactic web observations point to a flaw in our understanding of galaxy formation. Perhaps we're wrong about the role of dark matter in the large-scale structure formation of the universe. But these results could lead us to new physics and a better understanding of the cosmos. When the design of the James Webb Space Telescope was in its cradle, the first exoplanet wasn't even discovered. So scientists and engineers had to improvise Webb over the years to make the exploration of exoplanets one of its primary scientific goals. Fast forward to 2022, when Webb started working in full swing, NASA had confirmed the existence of more than 5,000 exoplanets. Webb is the best space telescope to study the atmosphere of the extrasolar worlds. The telescope isn't designed to discover new exoplanets, but it does aim to paint much more detailed pictures of known worlds by conducting something called transit spectroscopy. When a planet passes in front of its star, some of the star's light filters through the planet's atmosphere, and molecules in the atmosphere can absorb some of that starlight, creating dark lines in the stellar spectrum. The knowledge of a planet's atmosphere can teach astronomers how a planet might have formed and evolved, what its conditions are like, and what chemical processes are taking place in that atmosphere. The first detailed spectrum released by Webb was of a hot gas giant named WASP-96b lying over 1,150 light years away. The telescope could clearly detect water vapor in its atmosphere, something previously known. Webb's powerful new view also showed evidence of haze and clouds that previous studies of this planet did not detect. The most exciting spectrum revealed by Webb was of a hot Jupiter planet named WASP-39b. It lies about 700 light years away, and Webb discovered carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. The first detection of the gas in the atmosphere of any exoplanet. In addition, 
the telescope also detected carbon monoxide, potassium, sodium, sulfur dioxide, and water vapor in its atmosphere. The findings were described as the most detailed analysis of an exoplanet's atmosphere yet. The spectrum showed that there was a lot more oxygen than carbon, as well as an abundance of sulfur. Scientists think that sulfur must have come from numerous collisions that WASP-39b experienced with smaller planetesimals when it was forming, giving us clues to the planet's evolution that could also hint at how the gas giants in our own solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, formed. In addition, the existence of sulfur dioxide is the first example of a product of photochemistry on a planet beyond the solar system, since the compound forms when a star's ultraviolet light reacts with molecules in a planetary atmosphere. Working in full swing, Webb is expected to change the course of the field of exoplanet study in the next few years. It's finally time to probe deeper into the atmospheres of thousands of worlds discovered over the past three decades by various ground-based and space telescopes. The process of star formation is complex, and there are many things we don't know about it so far. Baby stars are born from dense clumps and clouds of dust and gas that collapse under gravity and start accumulating material from the cloud around them, forming a disk as the star spins. This protostar is shrouded by gas and dust, making it impossible to observe star formation using visible wavelengths. All that dust and gas block light from escaping to show us what's inside. However, the longer wavelengths of infrared light, the range through which James Webb views the universe, can penetrate dust, giving us a view into regions that are impossible to see in shorter wavelengths, such as the visible spectrum. And because of that, astronomers working on stellar astrophysics were quite excited about studying star formation using Webb data. The James Webb Space Telescope captured a new detailed image of the Orion Nebula, one of the closest star formation regions that's also visible to the naked eye. Webb provided the sharpest view of the Orion Nebula. One can see numerous spectacular structures, down to the scale of 40 astronomical units, or the size of our solar system. They were obtained by the NIRCAM instrument, which works in the infrared wavelength ranging from 0.8 to 5 microns. The images were a part of the early release science program and involved more than 100 scientists in 18 countries. One of the most iconic images of the Hubble Space Telescope was that of the Pillars of Creation. These are the columns of molecular gas many light years long found in the Eagle Nebula. Their cosmic nurseries where stars are born. Webb revisited the pillars of creation and observed the star-forming region in near and mid-infrared wavelengths. The telescope's infrared vision could penetrate through the dust in the pillars to gain a better view of the star formation going on inside, showing knots of molecular gas on the verge of collapsing into baby stars. Then, when those stars are just a few hundred thousand years old, they begin to shoot out jets that erode the edges of the pillars. Before Webb, optical observations of young stars were limited because dust blocked their light. Radio and submillimeter observations could also provide only limited insights. But Webb now offers the resolution necessary to reveal the secrets of star formation in far greater detail than ever before. Although Webb was designed to probe deep space, it can also be used to observe our nearest neighbors, and the results have been promising. Webb's first solar system target was Jupiter. Astronomers were unsure of what to expect when Webb pointed at the gas giant because of how fast it moves and how bright the planet is compared to the faint distant galaxies the telescope usually observes. Scientists worried that Jupiter might overload Webb's sensitive detectors or wipe out fainter features with its glare. But the results were better than we had expected. The images showed Jupiter's faint rings, some of its small moons, and the planet's atmospheric bands and auroras. Webb also imaged far-flung Neptune, 
Saturn's moon Titan, and our neighboring planet Mars. Neptune's rings were first studied by Voyager 2, the only spacecraft to have visited the ice giant. Hence, Webb provided the first view of the ice giant's rings in over three decades. Within months, the James Webb Space Telescope has provided data that scientists have used to make record-breaking discoveries. In extragalactic astronomy, Webb has opened the windows to the last unexplored era in the history of the universe, the first billion years after the Big Bang. In stellar astrophysics, it has provided an opportunity to study the complex process of star formation in greater detail. And finally, with Webb, Astronomers can now probe the atmospheric conditions of thousands of exoplanets they discovered in the past three decades. This could lead to the discovery of potentially habitable worlds, and maybe extraterrestrial life too. Every Sunday, we release a video on the latest groundbreaking discoveries made in physics and astronomy. The videos of this series are created in a way so that there's something for everyone in them. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any video of the Sunday Discovery series.